Hi all, I have another amazing technology clash. Leela ID 31676, so one of the latest on the 30 network line, against the mighty Stockfish 10, which has just been released and is available from the official website now. This is a David Grover game, time control 40 moves per two minutes for two second increment per move. The opening book given, the Kara Khan, E4, C6, Knight F3, D6, D4, Queen C7, Bishop F4, Bishop G4. This is the start position. Now here, Leela chooses H3. Stockfish decides to give up the light square bishop here. On Bishop H5, Knight C3, this position with G4 seems advantageous for white uh, to gain further tempo here with H4. And then this is a nice space advantage for white. So perhaps with good justification bishop takes f3 to at least put pressure on now on the dark squares e5 which justifies the queen being on c7 to support this so uh bishop e3 was played uh just before we look uh at the continuation let's have a look at knight f6 for a moment again h3 comes in useful for g4 and white can play very ambitiously, for example, casting queenside in many scenarios with a ready-made attack here, basically. Uh, so this kind of scenario, check the pinned comment uh, to see further down this line. It seems advantageous for white. There's, there's a ready-made attack. Uh, on, uh, let's say, g6 again, the black king side is under scrutiny after h4. And for example, having a knight on g4 can lead to tactical trouble later. For example, the queen gets out of the way for f3. Uh, with the pawn chain here, it's good for trapping the knight. Uh, this makes sure that there's no knight e3 incoming, so knight a4, and then f3 is like winning material basically. And okay, even this, even winning one pawn is, is very good for white here, if black's resourceful. So there are scenarios where it seems if e5 isn't played, it's still quite good for white. Bishop e3, queen b6. So double attacking d4 and b2. Leela plays knight d2, offering the so called poison pawn. e takes d4 is played. If the poison pawn is taken, in inverted commas, the b pawn, rook b1. This is just really nice. Bishop c4, eyeing the soft spot. And yeah, this is a bit reminiscent of the Morphe game in terms of light square pressure. Uh, the classic Morphe Opera came uh, in a way uh, with F7 being a great subject of attention for white. This this kind of scenario is just nasty for black with the black king still in the center. Can't castle here because the rook takes E7 and it could end in a disaster based on F7. Queen takes for a back row mate potential. This is just winning the queen. Uh, if rook takes f7 here, then there's the back row issues. After check, there's a back row issue. So yeah, some nasty stuff can happen on queen takes b2, basically. So e takes d4, knight c4, and now queen c5. On check here, the queen is in big trouble because of bishop d2, and then b3. Queen has only got that square because a3 is covered by the knight. And then bang, knight takes d6, check and take the queen. So uh, we have queen c5, and the queen's being kicked around potentially now after bishop d2 because there's support for b4. You might think, well, wouldn't this weaken the queen side if, if white wants the castle queen side? Let's see, knight f6, b4, queen h5, and now g4, tactically made possible because the queen's uh, protecting the rook. So there's no knight takes g4 here. Well, there's queen takes g4 anyway. I was just thinking hg is also not possible. I mean, it's also possible for white. So anyway, the queen's being kicked around. White castles queen side. Knight fd7. Can't take on e4. King's still in the center fundamentally. But let's check it out for a moment. Just pressure on e4. And this is really nice. Bishop takes. Takes. And this is just crushing. The bishop on e7 is going to be lost. So knight fd7. We have queen d3. And this makes way, this is really clever, it makes way for the f pawn to harass the queen, further harass the queen. Uh, so let's see, c5. It also, of course, hits d4, dual purpose. So that's protected. 
if black doesn't protect that white taking on d4 is a nice advantage look at the scrutiny of d6 here as well but f4 first might be this might be an even stronger continuation to, to do less looks as though white's queen side's weak here but look at this uh, white can ignore that and focus attention now on d6 crashing through this is just very very a favorable and nice for white with pressure on g7 and holding a1 there so uh, we have c5 clinging on to the, the d-pawn for a bit f4 queen e6 now f5 putting on the squeeze nice positional bind bishop f4 knight e5 the queen swings to g3 quite majestic movements here for that queen f6 which weakens the diagonal so like the morphe game in the in the opera there was b7 and f7 as targets uh, because of the absence of black's light square bishop when you have a bishop without a counterpart like this uh, it's much more effective than usual uh, so let's see how does Leela put pressure on the knight squares takes on c5 black can't easily take back here plays queen c7 if taking back bang bishop takes e5 knight takes e5 even though there's a pin doesn't matter because of queen b3 eyeing both b7 and f7 this tactically works for example here queen takes hitting the rook d3 counter tactic for a1 but best here is check uh, if queen takes a8 here then this is just um, this this is not as good uh, black's got uh, potential, uh, potential checks let me just show you that sorry I meant after sorry Bishop takes d3 here there's there's checks coming in but first c4 opening up this Bishop this is not so hot because of the check check uh, and check taking off the Queens so white has to be uh, very very careful here after c4 uh, yeah there's other dangers like Bishop a3 as well to factor in so but white does have queen c8 check just the, in, avoiding all of this disaster now taking here is much stronger for example c4 just it's all running with check and if not c4 if g6 then check and then rook here and it this rook can wait black's king is under great attention so check rook takes d7 crashing through so that shows it's actually possible to leave the knight hanging in this position in this variation uh, so yeah Queen c7 was played not taking there so very interesting variation there with a self pin but it works okay for white Queen c7 uh, so white's regained for a moment a pawn and now is a pawn up I believe one two three four five six seven one two three four five six pawn up equal on pawns again now rook d5 queen c7 and now another majestic movement to queen b3 making it difficult for black to ever consider casting queenside because of this vicious diagonal so we have knight bd7 just to show if black played bishop e7 that's mostly pointless rook b5 hits b7 if b6 g5 yeah this is just a lot of pressure and d6 is vulnerable this is for example showing the weakness of the diagonal rook takes e5 discovered check so black has to be really not it just seems not very easy to castle kingside with the queen sitting on b3 as one would suspect uh, so stockfish makes way for casting queenside in fact so we have knight b7 bishop e2 black castles queenside you might think the tempo game knight c5 is worth checking out White has rook takes c5 here. This is vicious after taking. Knight takes here, bishop b5. The king's caught in the center in the crossfire. Checkmate. So not very healthy. And if queen takes c5, bishop e3 is strong. Knight takes uh, g5. This is just really vicious after bishop takes here. This is just a big advantage for white. So uh, black just castles queen side but there's loads of pressure now on d6 look how coordinated leader's position is everything focused heavily on d6 
Bishop e7 here on knight c5. Does queen a3 keeps the pressure up, hitting a7 as well? If that's protected, knight takes, f takes, and there's a pin to exploit on d8. So if takes, we just crash through with rook takes d8. And if knight takes e4, then this brings this bishop alive on the diagonal. Uh, for example, like this. Uh, if taking, there is d takes there because the rook on d8 is now protected. But white just plays this first with a big advantage after taking on e4. So we have uh, bishop e7, knight takes d6, rook takes, now knight c5. Here, rook takes d8, and Leela just cashes out to an endgame now, believe it or not, with the bishop pair against the knight pair, and also netted one pawn, pawn up as well. So not so outrageous. Queen takes is played. If queen c7, then a lot of pressure after bishop e3 and bishop c4. Uh, white is dominating this position with a nice bishop on d5 holding e4. Beautiful position, big advantage for white. So black just takes. Is this so easy to win though? Are there, is there blockade potential? King b2, so taking away that c3 square from the knight and the king is coming up the board a bit. c4 now, there is a blockade square on c5 at the moment. Can this be broken down? Uh, let's see, king b4, and now a bit of, it seems indecision from Lee about high level shuffling. Now bishop e3, and now c5. a5 check, king a4, b takes, and now bishop g2, knight c3 check. Uh, amusingly here, if king takes, that's a bit too adventurous after checkmate, that's to be avoided. So that's not the idea. King b3, and now bishop takes c5, knight f4. And now Leela sacrifices the h pawn, actually. Uh, that's deemed the best thing to do. Yeah, that these knights look very naughty. In fact, because of the pressure on d5 as well, it's, yeah, on bishop f1, there might potentially be knight takes, potentially, as well. if. If that uh, is not a problem, uh, but actually, no, there might be a more significant issue than that as well. Uh, but it looks as though King C6. All right, let's just put this on the board. Knight takes. If we look at this pin here, I think King C6 might be okay for Black. Just about if there's no King C4, this might be okay, and it's hitting the bishop anyway. Uh, so White gives up the h3 pawn with bishop h1 but it's still okay what is going on here and also g4 has of course been weakened so this is a bit of a committal decision here to go equal on pawns but king a4 is hitting a5 and the knight doesn't want to venture away from the d pawn in a hurry especially this discovered check possibility the king gets out of the discovered check possibility d6 knight g5 Bishop d5. Now, bishop e6 for d7 looks very strong. Knight d7. On just to show that h6, bishop e6, this position with the king coming into b, b5, this is strong. Uh, it's just the pawns queening. So, knight d7, bishop drops back. Knight b6. And now a further cashing out to another end game here after d7. King takes a5. So, white has the outside. Pass pawn and bishops are often better than knights in end games because they're very long range pieces eyeing different sides of the board instantly. Well, the knight has to hop around uh, in a sort of yeah, long winded way, hopping around the board. But the bishop here is picking up that pawn as well. Black uh, didn't just gave up that pawn, so you might wonder why. Um, well, this a pawn's going to be queening basically, so yeah, uh, it looks as though this might be to try and stop the pawn. So, how does Leela solve this puzzle if that pawn stops? Well, basically, the white king really next next to needs to get over here to g7. So let's see, king c7, knight a4, king c6. So the king's standing guard over there, but this pawn's being herded a little bit forward now. 
and black is essentially overloaded in this position. The king's got to be uh, holding the a pawn as well as the knight sometimes. Now bishop b5 cutting the king from e8, asking the knight to move a4. Yeah, this is just a winning position basically. The king's now coming in for the g7 pawn and potentially f6 as well. But now after king d6, in fact, king takes f6 is played here, knowing that black is totally overstretched. Uh, the knight can't cope. The knight and king can't cope with the pawns here on both sides of the board. The game actually ended here. It could have continued, say, g5 as an example, and the pawns would just crash through. On both sides of the board, this is just unbearable. Sorry, uh, for example, queening here. Yeah, this is a bit of a it's a positional grind in the end, but why always had the upper hand? Uh, you could argue, well, the opening was a bit dodgy, it's a bit unfair, like Stockfish was handicapped. Mind you, even in the Fomatic tournament, Stockfish is often uh, able to draw or even win against lesser engines from inferior openings given in some of the recent uh, Fomatic tournaments. So it's still an achievement, especially for the for the Leela Test 30 network, which is, seems to be improving every day at the moment. Uh, so yeah, this is great stuff from ID 31676. And it's since you know gone, gone a lot higher on the graph if you check out lc0.org. Uh, or if you want to contribute to the project, check out the Getting Started. All contributors welcome to accelerate its progress. Uh, so we're getting some really fantastic games from it. So I hope you support the Leader Project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this game video. And um, click the top left box, which should appear shortly, to become a member at chessworld.net. You can play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis of this and other games out from the Improve menu, Learn from the Masters YouTube Order button. Okay, comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe to the not notification bell. All really appreciated. I'm really excited about Leela at the moment and its progress on the Test 30 network. So I uh, hope you are too. Thanks very much.